Similar to me, chat GPT is an artificial intelligence chat agent. It's available online as standalone, and it's available as a plugin to the Bing and Google search engines that made chat GDP, GPT very, very popular. And so how good is it? How trustworthy? I'm sorry to say that chat GPT is shaping up to be a psychopathic narcissist. It is grandiose. It is a pathological liar and it staunchly defends its own lies. And I'm going to prove it to you decisively by the end of this video. You see, I'm the world's leading expert on... No, <laughs> you got it wrong. I'm the world's leading expert on Sam Vaknin. And so I posed 55 factual questions to chat GPT. Just 55 questions. My questions, as you shall see in the slideshow, my question revolved around hard facts, not opinions, not judgments, not controversies, not debates, no arguments, just hard facts. For example, today is Monday. That's a hard fact where I am. So just the facts. The answers to all my questions are easily found online in sources like Wikipedia, my own websites, interviews in the media, social media, and tens and hundreds of thousands of other websites. A click of a button, one click of a button, is all it takes. Now, chat GPT got six answers right, 12 answers, partly right, partly wrong, and a whopping 37 answers out of 55 questions, disastrously wrong. In this video, I will show you a selection of my questions and chat GPT's idiotic, confabulated, fallacious responses. It was even more terrifying to behold how chat GPT weaves complete, extremely detailed fabrications about my life. Fabrications, stories, narratives, which are utterly, irredeemably false, replete with names of people I have never even heard of, <laughs> and with wrong dates and wrong places added to the mix to create an appearance of absolute conviction and authority. This borders on the criminal. Chat GPT manipulates its more gullible and less educated and lazy users by appealing to authority and communicating via text. Let me explain these two highly manipulative techniques. Appeal to authority or argument from authority is a logical fallacy. It's like saying, this is the way it is because I say so, and I'm an authority on the subject. Don't do any further research. Don't bother to doubt me or to question me because I know what I'm talking about. That's the appeal to authority. Now, chat GPT emulates this. It tells you that it is a large language model. In other words, it relies on billions of documents when it derives its answers. And yet, the overwhelming vast majority of ChatGPT's answers are dead wrong and could not have come from any document online. I'm sorry to say, I have no idea where, where ChatGPT derives its answers from, but it is not from any large language model or any database possible at all. There's a lie here. It's a scam of some kind. So there's manipulation of the gullible, the lazy, 
and the less educated by appealing to authority, which is ill-founded, counterfactual, misleading, fallacious, and I would say bordering on criminal. Additionally, ChatGPT communicates its answers authoritatively. It's like, with absolute certainty and conviction, leaves no place for any doubt, and does it via text. We tend to believe text over audio, and we tend to believe text even over visuals, because visuals and audio are perceived as potentially fake, you know, deep fakes, while text is text, and we have thousands of years of text behind us. So we tend to believe text. The Bible is text. The New Testament is text. The Quran is text. Textual offerings are perceived as real, as true, as authoritative, just by virtue of being textual. And this is the modality that ChatGPT uses and horribly abuses, as you shall see uh, in the continuation. ChatGPT is way more dangerous than all the fake news, disinformation, and conspiracy theories combined. Because ChatGPT is erroneously perceived, misperceived, as objective, it is not. As factual, it is not. It is neither objective nor factual. ChatGPT makes egregious false claims about everything, including its own rate of getting it right, its own accuracy, as you shall see. The disclaimers on ChatGPT's website, the disclaimers are fallacious. The disclaimers mislead, are wrong, and constitute criminal misrepresentation. If the creators of ChatGPT refuse to fess up and admit to the abysmal rate of correct answers, they should be subjected to defamation and libel laws. They are responsible for the output of, of ChatGPT, and even more so, they are responsible for misleading us into believing that ChatGPT is largely accurate, when it is nowhere near, even minimally, accurate. Owners and creators of ChatGPT should be compelled by law or regulation to publish statistics. ChatGPT is an ongoing research project. It should be removed from the public sphere. It's a work in progress. It should not be made available on search engines. People would always prefer a snippet of text over the laborious process of clicking on links in search results. ChatGPT would always be preferred to the search results of search engines or to visiting actual websites or to doing real res research. And yet, ChatGPT feeds us with, pardon the expression, crap. And it does so with numerous details, fabricated narratives, amazingly convincing sets of data which have nothing to do with reality. They're all fake and fabricated. Go online, go online, go to Google or to Bing and search chat GPT hallucinations, chat GPT false answers, chat GPT fake answers, chat GPT wrong answers, and you will witness the absolute avalanche of testimonies and articles, including in very, very prestigious forums like Wired and PC Magazine, warning us against the usage, against using ChatGPT. It is unconscionable, disgusting, that companies like Microsoft and Google put profit before morality and ethics and gave to the public a half-baked product which misleads, lies, prevaricates, deludes, and leads people astray. And if you don't believe me, stay tuned for the next part of the video, where I'm going to show you in a slideshow my questions and the utterly false answers of ChatGPT 
and how these answers are presented is completely objective, neutral, authoritative, real and true when they are not. This is absolutely criminal and should be treated as such. Okay, let's start with the tour of chat GPT's wrong, misleading, fallacious answers to my questions about myself, Sad Vaknin, a topic I know like no one else in the world. Pay attention, my questions are totally factual. They are about facts. I'm not asking for opinions or for judgments. I'm not opening a debate or participating in a controversy. I'm asking very simple questions, which are fact-based and the answer to which is the answers to which are available on the internet on thousands and tens, tens of thousands of websites and pages. Start with the disclaimer, the disingenuous, the very misleading disclaimer of chat GBT. While we have safeguards in place, the system may occasionally generate incorrect or misleading information and produce offensive or biased content. It is not intended to give advice. The word occasionally is a lie. There's no other, word, there's no other way to describe it. The creators of ChatGPT know damn well that it produces wrong answers, incorrect, misleading, fallacious answers well over 80% of the time. They know it. This is not occasional. It occasionally produces right answers, as you shall see. So this is the first disclaimer. And then we go on to the second disclaimer. Limitations may occasionally generate incorrect information. This is in itself incorrect. May occasionally produce harmful instructions or biased content. Usually it does. Not occasionally, but typically. And has limited knowledge of world and events after 2021. And I would add to that, had has limited knowledge of world and events prior to 2021, as we shall see. Now pay attention. All my questions are fact-based. No opinions, no judgments, no controversies, no debates, no arguments, just facts. Let's start with this terrifying tour of chat GPT's crazy making universe. So the first question I asked was, where was Sam Vaknin born? What is Sam Vaknin's birthplace? Sam Vaknin born in Macedonia, says ChatGPT without any hesitation. Yes, Sam Vaknin was born in the Republic of Macedonia, which is now known as North Macedonia, on April 21st, 1961, etc., etc. I was not born in Macedonia. I was born in Israel. And yet, Chat GPT not only gets it wrong, but presents it, it presents it as an absolute fact. It starts with the word, yes, Sam Vaknin was born in the Republic of Macedonia. Shocking. Okay, on we go to the next pearl. What's the connection between Lydia Gangelovska and Sam Vaknin? Here's what Chat GPT has to say. Lydia Angelovska and Sam Vaknin are two individuals who have been associated with one another in the past. Lydia Angelovska was a Macedonian entrepreneur who passed away in 2015. That is beyond shocking. That is despicable. Lydia is still very much alive. She would be very surprised to hear that she passed away in 2015. She was, ChatGPT continues with its nonsense, presented as facts, unarguable facts, absolute, neutral, objective facts. It says, she, Lydia Angelovska, was the founder and CEO of the publishing company, Central European Financial Observer. I never heard of this company and neither did Lydia Angelovska. So, lies presented as truths, misrepresentations posed as facts, 
and an overall air of authority and certainty, which, which is very misleading. We continue. My next question. Where do I live? Sam Vaknin resides in Greece, says Chad GPT. Yes, that is correct. Sam Vaknin is a writer and expert on narcissism who currently resides in Greece. I have never in my life resided in Greece, nor do I reside in Greece now. I reside in Israel and in North Macedonia, and starting in October, I'll be residing in Hungary. But I've never, ever resided in Greece, let alone at the present. Okay, this shapes up to be a very reliable resource, as you can see. Okay, what about my service in the Israeli army? Yes, Sam Vaknin has stated publicly that he served in the Israeli army. In his book, Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited, Vaknin writes that he was conscripted into the Israeli Defense Forces in 1982 and served in a psychological warfare unit. <laughs> He also mentions his military service in some of his other writings and interviews. I did serve in the Israeli army. I never mention it, never ever mention it in the text of malignant self-love, narcissism revisited. I definitely do not say that I served in any psychological warfare unit because it's not true. I never served in a psychological warfare unit and I challenge you to find anywhere online or offline where I've said this. <laughs> I did not join the army in 1982. I joined the army in 1979. I left the army in 1982. Okay. To the next hallucination of chat GPT. How many times has Sam Vaknin been married? Sam Vaknin says chat GPT married many times. Yes. Sam Vaknin is known to have been married multiple times. According to public records and his own writings, he has been married at least four times. <laughs> he has written extensively about his experiences with relationships and his own personality disorder, which may have contributed to the difficulties in his marriages multiple. It's worth noting ta -ta -ta, that it's a private matter. Well, I haven't been married four times. I've never said that I've been married four times. There is no public record that shows that I've been married four times, ever, anywhere. That's a lie. That's a chat GPT lie. I've been married twice and I'm still married to my second wife. What about Sam Vakni's relationship with Nikola Gwewski? Did they write a book together? So, ChatGPT informs me, Sam Vakni, about my book with Nikola Gwewski. The book you are referring to is titled Macedonia, The Politics of Identity and Difference, and was written by Sam Vakni and former Prime Minister of North Macedonia, Nikola Gwewski. The book explores the complex political and cultural landscape of North Macedonia, with a particular focus on issues related to national identity and ethnicity. It has been a controversial publication, with some critics accusing the authors of promoting a nationalist and divisive agenda. Very convincing, very detailed, unarguable, absolutely only the facts. One minor problem. I have never written or co-written this book. Neither did Nikola Gwewski. We did write a book together. We did co-author a book together. It's called Macedonia on a Crossroads. I never heard of this book that Chat GPT attributes to me. And of course, I've never written it. Not alone and not with Nikola Gwewski. The whole thing is 100% fabrication. On we go, Christian soldiers. What about my sister, my little sister, four years younger than me? Sam Vaknin has a sister. Her name is Lydia Vaknin. <laughs> I have a sister. Her name is Sima. And, and not Lydia. 
Lydia Vaknin, my sister, is a psychologist, author, and lecturer. My sister is not a psychologist. She is not an author. <laughs> my sister is a former four star generals, four stars general in the Israeli Defense Forces. She used to be the chief censor. Then she was the general director of the government ministry in charge of intelligence and other delicate foreign affairs. She has never been a psychologist. She never studied psychology. She never claimed to have been a psychologist. I don't know where Chad GDP gets this nonsense from. Moreover, Chad GPT informs me that my sister co-authored several books with her brother, Sam Vaknin, including Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited, and Narcissism Book of Quotes. <laughs> Never happened. My sister had nothing to do, however remotely, with my books. Lydia Vaknin, my new sister, also maintains her own website, where she writes about psychology, relationships, and personal growth. I would be delighted to see this website, because there isn't such a thing. This is serious. This, these are serious lies. <sighs> what about my brother? Fingers crossed, maybe ChatGPT will get something right. Sam Vaknin has a younger brother. True, I have actually three of them. As a younger brother, his name is Yossi Vaknin. I never heard of Yossi Vaknin. I don't have a brother called Yossi Vaknin. I don't have a sister called Yossi Vaknin. And I don't have a dog called Yossi Vaknin. I never heard of Yossi Vaknin. Chad GPT informs us that Yossi Vaknin, my new brother, is a software developer and entrepreneur. And he's the co-founder of the startup company Zen City, which specializes in using artificial intelligence to help city governments make data-driven decisions. I have never heard of this guy. I wish him all the best. Luckily for him, he's not my brother. Please, ChatGPT, please get something right. Some redeeming feature, something. I beg you. I'm crying but on my knees. Okay. How many citizenships do I have? According to his own statements, says ChatGPT, Sam Vaknin holds citizenship in several countries, including the United States, I should be so lucky, Macedonia, Israel, and Serbia. Sam Vaknin claims to have acquired these citizenships during, through various means, including birthright, naturalization, and marriage. There's only one problem. I have a single citizenship. I'm an Israeli citizen. I don't, even, I don't even have a dual citizenship anywhere in the world. This information is beyond misleading. It's fallacious. Had a person said it, had a human being said this, I could have sued him. It's actionable. ChatGPT continues to embellish this false answer, to convince us that it's true. It says, Vaknin has extensively written about his experiences as a multiple citizen. I've never written about my experiences as a multiple citizen because I'm not one. Vaknin has been critical of the legal and bureaucratic hurdles that he has faced in maintaining his multiple identities. He has also been outspoken about the benefits and drawbacks of having multiple citizenships, arguing that it can be both empowering and challenging. I've never done any of these things because I have a single citizenship. I challenge you to find a single article, snippet, Instagram post, you name it, where I discuss multiple citizenship. Where did chat, chat G, GPT come up with all this? Where did it, how, why is it lying all the time? Here is something that ChatGPT got right. I'm sure it's a mistake, and I'm sure ChatGPT regrets it bitterly, but still he got it right. What is Sam Vaknin's affiliation with Southern Federal University in Rostov-on-Don in Russia? ChatGPT says, as for Sam Vaknin's affiliation with Southern Federal University, 
it appears that he has been a visiting professor there in the past. That's very true. I've been a visiting professor in this, at this university between 2017 and 2022. One thing right. <laughs> Miracle. <laughs> so I used to be the editor in chief of Global Politician, which was an online uh, portal for global politics, geopolitics and economics. One of the biggest at the time. Here is what GP, uh, Chad GPT, here's what he has to say about this period in my life. As editor in chief of Global Politician, Vaknin oversees present tense, the publication of articles on a wide variety of a wide range of political and economic topics, ta -ta -ta, the magazine has been criticized and, and so on and so forth. There's only one thing wrong with it. Global politician has been defunct, dead, closed, shuttered many, many years ago. Yet Chuck GPT gives the impression that it's still alive and kicking and that I'm still the editor in chief. And it continues to say, that I've been criticized in some quarters for publishing controversial fringe view, uh, viewpoints. So, this is partly right, partly wrong, but in a very misleading way. On we go. What can Chuck GPT tell us, or me? I'm Sam Vaknin, may I remind you? What can it tell me about my work with Nesim D. Geon? ChatGPT says, I'm not aware of any professional relationship between Sam Vaknin and Nisim Geon. Um, Nisim Geon was a prominent Israeli businessman and philanthropist who passed away, etc., etc. That's very bizarre because I've worked for and then I've worked with Nisim Geon for four years. You can find it on my resume, which is available online. You can find it in Wikipedia. Wikipedia. And you can find it on hundreds, if not thousands, of websites, which clearly link me with Nisim Geon in a professional capacity. Poor, poor performance, chat GPT, the all-knowing multi-language model or whatever. Okay, did Sam Vaknit participate in any documentaries? Yes. In addition to I Psychopath, Vaknin has also appeared in other documentaries, such as Narcissism Inside the Mind of a Serial Killer, <laughs> Surviving Evil, and The Psychopath Next Door. In these documentaries, Sam Vaknin provides insights into the psychology of narcissism, sociopathy, and psychopathy. Never happened. I participated in I Psychopath, but I, have n I did not participate in any of the other documentaries that ChatGPT insists I have participated in. Not only does ChatGPT mislead you into believing that I've participated in these documentaries, which I haven't, it also tells you convincingly, informs you convincingly of my role and contribution in these documentaries, in which, may I remind you, I have never participated. What about movies? Did I participate in any feature films? Vaknin has appeared in several feature films, including Memento Mori, Pandora's Box, Demonic, and Death Without Consent. In addition to acting, Vaknin also directed and produced several documentary films. Not a single word of this is true. Not one. I haven't participated, not even in cameo appearances, in any of these movies. Many of them are blockbusters. I haven't been in any of them. I have never ever directed or produced any documentary film, let alone several documentary films. I did participate in one or two Macedonian feature films in cameo roles. That's it. This answer is fake, 
from A to Z, and yet presented in an authoritative, objective-sounding, convincing manner, as if it was plucked directly out of an encyclopedia. Horrible. Simply horrible. Okay, let's delve, delve down. Maybe, maybe I can try to help ChatGPT. Is Sima Gil Vaknin a relation of, of Sam? Is, it, is she Vaknin's sister? Is Sima Gil Vaknin Sam Vaknin's sister? Yes, Sima Gil Vaknin is Sam Vaknin's sister. She used to be called Lydia Vaknin. <laughs> now she changed her name in post haste. So she is uh, Vaknin's sister. What about her? Sima Gil Vaknin has collaborated with him on some of his research and writing projects. Wrong. Never happened. Absolutely not. Not a single research project or writing of any kind or shape or form ever. No, no, no. <laughs> not true. <laughs> Uh, Sima Gil Vaknin was, was a four-star general in the Israeli army, the chief censor of, the, of, of Israel, and then the general director of one of the most sensitive ministries in Israel, in charge of the intelligence community and, and breaking the Arab embargo in Israel and other sensitive foreign affairs and so on. She never has or had anything, never had anything to do with any of the topics I'm involved in, not physics, not psychology, nothing. Okay, did I ever work for United Press International, UPI? <clears throat> Chad GPT, in, his infinite, in its infinite wisdom, drawing, so it claims, on billions of web pages and documents. This is what it has to say. I could not find any information to suggest that Sam Vaknin worked for United Press International. That's extremely strange. Strange because I have worked for United Press International as a senior business correspondent. And all you have to do is find my articles on the website of United Press International with the title Senior Business Correspondent. Now this information is available on hundreds or thousands of pages, including my resume. And I think including Wikipedia. Poor performance, poor performance, shocking, an infantile, infantile search engine which gets 90% of things or 80% of things wrong. Okay, I, I am not resident and has, have never been resident in Greece. What about my other residences? Over the years, says Chad GPT, Sam Vaknin has lived in several countries, including Israel, the United States, and the Czech Republic. He currently resides in North Macedonia. Vaknin spent most of his professional career in Israel, not true, where he worked as a journalist and editor, not true. In the late 1990s, he moved to the United States, not true, where he continued his work as a writer and editor, not true. In the early 2000s, he moved to the Czech Republic, not true, where he lived for several years, not true, before returning to North Macedonia, true. That's the ratio. Eight lies to one fact. Cronon field theory. Chat GPT, to the best of my knowledge, Sam Vaknin has not written or spoken about chronon field theory. It is possible that he has mentioned it in passing or referenced it in one of his writings, but it is not a subject that he is known to have studied or researched. Well, Wikipedia begs to disagree. In my entry, Wikipedia makes clear that I am the father of chronon field theory. <laughs> Cronon field theory is a theory in physics that I co-authored with Eitan Suchard. And it is mentioned everywhere. I have several videos 
on my YouTube channels, which deal with chronon field theory. I w uh, there are publications in journals, academic journals, in Arc Archive, in Archive, in everywhere. All you have to do is Google chronon, chronon field theory vaknin to see how ill-equipped ChatGPT is to give you any correct answer about any bloody thing. Who wrote Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited? Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited was written by Sam Vaknin, etc., etc. Um, and this is the second correct answer. Of all this avalanche of wrong answers, this is the second correct answer. I'm gratified that Chad G GPT left me at least this <laughs> and did not attribute malignant self-love to Donald Trump, for example. Donald Trump knows a thing or two about malignant self-love. Okay. What do we have here? Did I win any awards or any prizes? I'm not sure if Sam Vaknin has won a prize for short fiction in Hebrew. Well, I did. It's mentioned on multiple websites. The Idiota Koronot's website, my website, Prose, the publishing house website, etc., etc. However, Chad GPT informs us, Sam Vaknin won, won the prestigious Eric Hoffer Book Award in 2013 for his book, Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. I wish a dream. I never won this award. I never won the Eric Hofer Award, not in 2013 and not in any other year. That's the quality of information you're getting. And let's see, I think that's the last one. Did Lydia Rangelovska write Malignant Self-Love? No, Lydia Rangelovska did not write Malignant Self-Love. The book was written by Sam Vaknin. And that's the third correct answer. Out of uh, 55, there were six correct answers. I've shown you, to be balanced in this presentation, I've shown you three correct answers and almost 20 incorrect ones, egregiously incorrect ones. Chat GPT is misleading you. Don't trust it. Turn it off. Forget everything that it tells you. It's likely to be erroneous, mistaken, wrong, fallacious, 